July 25, 1961, America is waiting for the arrival in Washington of the Prime Minister of the Federation of Nigeria, Alhaji Sir Abubakar Tafawa Balewa. Prime Minister Balewa is making an official visit to America at the invitation of the President of the United States, John F. Kennedy. Waiting at the airport to greet him are Vice President Lyndon B. Johnson, Secretary of State Dean Rusk, Mr. Joseph Palmer, the American Ambassador to Nigeria, and other high-ranking American officials. Accompanying the Prime Minister is Minister of Foreign Affairs, Wachuku, Ambassador Udochi, and Minister Shagari and Benson, and other key members of the Nigerian government. Prime Minister, I am honored to welcome you and the distinguished members of your party to the United States. This welcome is only the beginning. You will find as you travel through this country a very deep and genuine interest in the exciting developments which are taking place in your country and in Africa today. I am very pleased to be with you in, the, in Washington today. And I look forward to the week which we are to spend among you. I have no doubt that the American people will receive us with all the kindness that they all receive strangers. This is just a brief reply to your very warm address of welcome. Thank you. Official motorcade now conveys Prime Minister Balewa to the center of Washington. Many friendly Americans are waiting to welcome Sir Abubakar to his home in Washington. During his stay in the American capital, the distinguished visitor will reside at the Blair House, the special residence for guests of the American president. Just across the street from the Blair House is the White House, where President Kennedy awaits Prime Minister Balewa. The two leaders are meeting to discuss matters of mutual and international interest. In a joint communique summarizing the outcome of their deliberations, they reaffirm their support for the principle of self-determination for dependent peoples and their unalterable opposition to racial discrimination under any name or in any guise. President Kennedy expressed his pleasure at the success of the Monrovia Conference and congratulated the Prime Minister on his constructive contribution. The two leaders affirmed their confidence that their exchange of views had strengthened the bonds of friendship between their two countries.
the next stop for Sir Abu Bakar is a memorial to one of America's best loved presidents, Abraham Lincoln. The Lincoln Memorial is a goal for every visitor to the American capital. Tourists from all over the world are drawn by a reverence for the man known by all men as the great emancipator. As they stand before the statue of Lincoln, the Prime Minister and his party remember the words in which Lincoln addressed his countrymen. He called upon them to do all which may achieve and cherish a just and lasting peace among ourselves and with all nations. Sir Abubakar and his party see a monument to America's first president, George Washington, as they leave the Lincoln Memorial. A group of children proudly display the placard which Prime Minister Balewa has autographed for them. The United States Department of State is the Prime Minister's next stop. An exhibit of photographs from Nigeria and of Nigerian arts and crafts has been planned to coincide with Sir Abubakar's visit. This exhibit is aimed at helping Americans to understand the progress being made in Nigeria. Prime Minister Balewa is once again warmly greeted by Secretary of State Dean Rusk. The meeting affords an occasion for the two men and their advisors to confer on a wide variety of subjects. The House of Representatives of the United States invites Prime Minister Balewa to speak in a special session convened in his honor. regarded as a signal honor and privilege to be invited to address this world-famed gathering, not only because the United States of America is one of the leading nations of the world and one of the most powerful and advanced on earth today, but also because I believe that those who have struggled and worked to achieve independence will share with you and the great country which you represent. A special meaning of liberty, of freedom from outside control, and opportunities for the fulfillment of one's national desires and cultural heritage. No one who visits the United States of America will fail to notice the effects of a free society and of a democratic system of government in which the rulers are the embodiments of the will of the people and where the activity of those who rule are reviewed frankly from time to time by the entire population. We admire the American way of life and we respect the people of the United States for their love of freedom. The spirit of freedom which was kindled in the hearts of the founders of your great nation and has impelled you to great feats in moments of national emergency as well as in your daily activities. That same spirit has shown itself in Africa and we are determined that the flame of freedom once alight shall not go out again in our continent. The Islamic Center and Mosque is one of the American capital's more beautiful religious structures. Al-Haji Sir Abu Bakr arrives to visit the mosque, which is a center for study and research on Islam. Dr. Mahmoud Hobala, the director of the Islamic Center, greets Prime Minister Balewa.
Dr. Hobala personally conducts his distinguished visitor on a tour of the center and answers the Prime Minister's questions about its varied activities. When Sir Abubakar visited the United States in 1955, the Islamic Center had not yet been completed. The Prime Minister is impressed by its finished state and also by America's interest in Islam. The chiefs of mission of the African nations hold a special reception in honor of Prime Minister Balewa and his party. Present at this gala occasion are Ambassador and Mrs. Udochi and many other distinguished official and diplomatic dignitaries. The gathering provides Prime Minister Balewa with an opportunity to renew a number of old friendships and to talk informally with new acquaintances and old friends alike. The National Press Club, whose membership includes distinguished world journalists, is one of the most influential forces on public opinion in the United States. Prime Minister Balewa, in response to a special invitation, addresses its members and then replies to their questions. I would like to thank you, Mr. President, and the executive members of your organization for giving me the opportunity to address such a distinguished gathering. The Prime Minister tells his audience that he is greatly encouraged by the increased interest that the United States is demonstrating in Nigeria and in other African nations. He states his belief that close association among African nations is of great importance, especially in the fields of health, transport, and communications. Speaking about the United Nations, he emphasizes that it is the only means of holding the world together. Well, thank you very much, Mr. President. Thank you. Gettysburg, Pennsylvania was the site in 1863 of one of the decisive battles in the American Civil War. The war, sometimes known as the War Between the States, began in 1861 and ended in 1865. The Battle of Gettysburg was a turning point in the war, which ended in the defeat of the rebel forces. Sir Abubakar requested that his visit to the United States include a tour of this famous battlefield. That evening, Prime Minister Balewa gives a dinner in honor of President Kennedy. President Kennedy and Senator Hubert Humphrey engage Prime Minister Balewa in a few moments of informal conversation. Leaving Washington on July 28th, Prime Minister Balewa flies to Chicago.
Northwestern University, near Chicago, is one of America's leading educational institutions. At the invitation of its president, Sir Abubakar and his party visit the university, which is well known for its African Studies program. Before touring the African Studies Center, the Prime Minister and his party signed the university's guest book. <music> Professor Melville Herskovitz, head of the African Studies Center, escorts Sir Abubakar to the African Studies Reading Room. Northwestern University has a collection of 20,000 volumes on Africa. <music> Professor Herskovitz presents his honored guest with a collection of books on Africa published by the university. The prime minister tells the students and faculty at Northwestern that he is glad to see their interest in Africa. He adds that he soon expects Nigerian scholars to produce books like those at Northwestern and congratulates the university on its foresight. <laughs> Later that day, Prime Minister Balewa attends a reception in his honor given by the mayor of Chicago, Richard J. Daly. At the reception, Sir Abubakar is made an honorary citizen of Chicago, the nation's second largest city, with a population of over three million. Mayor Daly says that Prime Minister Balewa represents all that symbolizes progress, freedom, unity, and faith. On the sixth day of his visit to America, Sir Abubakar travels by plane to Knoxville, Tennessee. There, Sir Abubakar visits the Fort Loudoun Dam, part of the Tennessee Valley Authority, which is widely known as TVA. The world-famous TVA project was established to develop the Tennessee River for flood control, navigation, and electric power production. It provides controlled irrigation and low-cost electric power to the people of a region covering 40,000 square miles, approximately the area of the Republic of Liberia. Prime Minister Balewa takes particular interest in the Tennessee Valley Project, since a similar plan is underway in his own country to make the fullest possible use of the Great Niger River. A few miles from the dam, Sir Abubakar visits a farm. This farm was chosen a few years ago by the Tennessee Valley Authority as an experimental test farm. By means of modern fertilizers and agricultural methods, it has been changed in a short time from a barren and unproductive piece of land to what the Prime Minister now sees. Lessons derived from experimental farms benefit the entire valley. The Prime Minister finds interest in a farm machine which gathers hay and packs it into bales. A group of neighbors has come to the farm to give a small party in honor of Sir Abubakar. Taking leave of Knoxville, Prime Minister Balewa goes on to New York.
Sir Abubakar is on his way to New York University, which is the largest private educational institution in the United States, with a student body of over 40,000. The Prime Minister receives the highest honor accorded by the University, the degree of Doctor of Laws Honoris Causa. The citation to Prime Minister Balewa extols his influence, which extends beyond the boundaries of his country as a constructive force in the continent of Africa and throughout the world. The Overseas Press Club in New York, an organization of American foreign correspondents, holds a luncheon in honor of Sir Abubakar. Addressing its members, Prime Minister Balewa says that the United States can help the African nations by giving them encouragement, by telling nations who still rule African countries to give them freedom, and by putting at the disposal of African countries the knowledge and experience America has accumulated. At New York's most famous hotel, the Waldorf Astoria, the African American Institute and the American Society of African Culture give a dinner in honor of Prime Minister Balewa. Among the many distinguished guests is Mr. James Farley, whose counsel is often sought by statesmen at home and abroad. Sir Abubakar is delighted to encounter the famous American singer, Marian Anderson. The United Nations is ready to receive Prime Minister Balewa. The Prime Minister, one of the most outspoken supporters of the United Nations, attends a meeting of the delegates of the African and Asian nations. He reminds the delegates of the importance of working together and presses upon them that it is desirable not to form blocks, but to pursue the truth and try to bring some sanity into the world. After addressing the African and Asian delegates, Prime Minister Balewa meets United Nations Secretary General Doug Hammarskjöld, who escorts Sir Abubakar into the auditorium of the General Assembly, which was not in session at the time of his visit. Prime Minister Balewa's last appearance in the United States takes place at Gracie Mansion, the residence of New York's Mayor Robert F. Wagner. At a reception in honor of the distinguished visitor, Mayor Wagner accords Prime Minister Balewa honorary citizenship of New York, the nation's largest city. American ambassador to the United Nations, Adlai Stevenson, greets Sir Abubakar. After receiving a symbol of his New York citizenship, the Prime Minister addresses a few words of farewell to the American people. I find it difficult to express to you my thanks because since my arrival in the United States, I've been receiving a lot of kindness and hospitality from different people, from the President, from all the people. And now on the eve of my departure to my country, from you, Mr. Mayor. You in the United States have got a lot to teach the rest of the world in the art of living together in peace with one another. I go back to my country with a lot of encouragement, knowing fully well that the people of the United States think well of us, and we are very eager also to be the friends of your citizens. I hope 
that by our coming together, by our exchanging ideas, and by showing one another mutual respect and understanding, we shall be able to make this world a better place for mankind. Once again, thank you very much. And we shall go back to Nigeria with happy memories of our stay in the United States of America.